What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into model factories in Laravel. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon where now we get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. In the last video, we touched on seeders in Laravel, where we created two rows inside our database with data. When it comes down to testing, you don't want to define every single row like we've did with our seeders. Laravel provides an incredible tool called Model Factories, where we can define one or even more fake rows inside our database. In my personal opinion, using it together with Eloquent is the best possible way. So let's start off by doing that. First of all, we need to make sure that we define a new factory class through the CLI. We could simply perform the same command as we've been doing in the last few episodes, starting with PHP artisan make. Then we got to tell artisan that we want to define a new factory, followed with a factory name. Now quick tip, keep it equal to the operation that we're going to perform. Our main goal will be generating new instances for the post table. So let's name our factory post factory. Let's hit enter. Our factory has been created successfully. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Just like migrations and seeders, model factories will be located inside the database folder where you have a factories folder, where you'll see our newly created post factory class right here. By default, Laravel defines the user factory as well, since it also defines the user migration. But our focus will be on the post factory. Operations that you're going to perform within factories needs to be defined inside the definition method that we have right here. You'll see that it's returning an array. So we need to make sure that we define key value paths right here to persist data into our database. The key of our array needs to be equal to our database column names. So let's define them with static data again. Let's say that we have our title, which will be model factories. We have our excerpt, which will be excerpt of our first model factory. We have our body, which will be content of body. We have the image underscore path, which will be, let's say, image path. We have our is underscore published, which will be one. Finally, we have our minutes to read, which will be two. Let's take a moment and talk about the differences between our model factory and our seeder class. Well, we're done. There isn't actually any difference right here because we've defined static values right here as well. Whenever you want to generate multiple rows with different content inside of it, you can use an instance of the faker class. Faker makes it super easy to generate random data. And I'll also link the GitHub repository of Faker down below so you can go over the different data types and values that you can generate, since it's way too much to handle in one single video. But for now, follow along. Let's start off with the title. Let's remove the string that we have. And we need to make sure that we call the Faker instance by saying this Faker. Then we can chain another method to it, which will be the value of our title. In our case, Let's say that it needs to generate a fake sentence. Our excerpt will be a little summary of the actual content. So let's remove the static string that we have to this faker real text. The real text method does accept a couple optional parameters. The one that we actually want to define is the dollar sign max and b chars, which will be equal to 50. What we're doing right here is basically saying that the maximum number of characters of our excerpt is 50. Now let's change our body as well to this faker, which needs to be a bit longer than a real text of 50 characters. So we can change the text method to it. We could also change our image. And usually when I work with images, I won't because it's the last thing that you should be worried about. But for the sake of this video, let's remove our default string. And let's call the faker instance. So this faker, and we're going to chain the image URL method to it. The image URL has two optional parameters, which will be the width and the height of our image. So in our case, let's set the width equal to 640 comma and a height of 480. Now let's keep the published at equal to one. I can't be bothered about that, but we can remove the minutes to read. 
and call the this faker class again and chain the number between method. The meta name kind of implies what we need because we do need to provide a range. So let's say that the numbers between one and 10 needs to be added for the minutes to read. There are some optional methods that you could chain to your values right here. And I think that we should add one for the title. So let's go right after our faker instance, but right in front of the sentence. And let's chain the unique method to it. And don't forget to add the access operator. What we're basically saying right here is that the title needs to be unique inside the database. Otherwise, the same slug will be generated. Whenever you want to put your database factory into work, you got to write a seeder for it, and specifically the database seeder that has already been defined. At the moment, we're calling the post table seeder, so let's comment it out. And let's go on the line below, because we're going to tell our database seeder that we want to persist our post factory. But we haven't actually defined anywhere inside our code that we'd like to persist it inside the post table. This can be done by calling our post model. Let's pull it in. The post model has a method defined, which is called factory, but it is a facade. So let's add colon colon factory. The factory method accepts one parameter, which will be an integer where we've got to tell our factory how many rows we want to generate from the post factory class. This can be anything you want. So what I want to do is to add 100 rows inside our post table. We're not done yet because we also get to tell our seeder that it needs to save these rows inside our database. So we need to chain one more method to it called create. All right, we're ready to run our seeder. Let's save the file and let's navigate back to the CLI and let's perform the php artisan db colon seed command. Let's hit enter. As you can see, our database seeder has been completed successfully. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open our database client, refresh it, open the post table, and as you can see, we have a total of 100 rows right here with fake data. Let's talk about a couple additional facts related to model factories that are not required to know, but are definitely interesting to know that it can happen. The first thing is the fact that you can overwrite properties when calling your model factory inside the database seeder. Let's navigate back to our database seeder and let's pass in an array inside of the create method where we can overwrite specific key value pairs from our post factory. So let's test it out. Let's say that we want to override our body and the value needs to be overriding the body of our post. If we save it, navigate back to the CLI, hit the arrow up and seed our factory, navigate back to Visual Studio Code, refresh it and open our post table, go to the second page, and right here, you'll see 100 new rows with a body of overriding the body of our post. Overriding the body of our post. Now let's close off our post table and let's remove the array inside the create method. Let's save it. And this was it for this video where I showed you how you could simply create your model factories. We will be coming back to this topic later on where we will be defining relationships inside of them. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.